You know what? Let's talk. Let's look at this one. I don't think I ever seen this one, to be honest. The awards season is off to a controversial start. Ricky Gervais caused a stir at the Golden Globes over the weekend with his controversial monologue, which suggested that Hollywood stars should keep their political opinions to themselves. So, with I agree. The BAFTAs just around the corner, we're asking whether it's time to take the politics out of the awards season. The headlines tonight, a man whose job it is to tell jokes, told some jokes, which exposed the hypocrisy of an industry that a few years ago suddenly decided to atone for the decades it spent turning a blind eye to serial sexual abuse by inventing a hashtag whilst wearing a black dress on the red carpet. <laughs> a black dress that cost more than most people's average annual salary. Yes. Hashtag me too. <laughs> and because he dared to take the piss out of a bunch of pampered millionaires for being a bunch of pampered millionaires, the media elite and the liberal twatterati have decided he must be right wing. The world's gone mad. It's definitely not he right wing. Dare to take the piss out of the entertainment industry's obsession with diversity, so long as it isn't diversity of opinion, of course, <laughs> then you must be a racist. <laughs> if BAFTA dares to nominate film directors based on the quality of their work rather than their genitals, they must be institutionally sexist, and any divergence yeah, from that opinion some, some will not be that. tolerated. How very liberal. Let's be honest, right? Force-feeding awards to Phoebe Waller-Bridge until she shits gold pate does nothing to help women into the film industry, especially if they're working class. What about this, right? 50% of nominees should be people who weren't educated at schools that most people would have to remortgage the fucking house for just to buy the fucking school uniform. Oh, wow. no, 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 that, that's not what we mean by diversity, says an industry full of privately educated privileged twats. Mm -hmm. The Independent went with the byline, Ricky Gervais's jokes overshadowed vital political statements. Are you fucking mental? Vital political statements? They're actors. They play, exactly. let's pretend for a living. Their political statements and opinions are not vital. These are the same people who bought you the Fast and Furious movies. And then, as if to further expose exactly the sort of disconnect that Gervais was making light of, you've got Stella McCartney, the daughter of one of the Beatles, tweeting praise for Whacking Phoenix for helping to save the planet by, get this, wearing the same tuxedo for the entirety of the award season. That's sentence in itself only one tuxedo for the whole award season no normal human being can relate to anything in that sentence it i don't even own a tuxedo and if i did wear one it would be just the one so that yeah the hypocrisy of the mainstream media here is hilarious. I, I, I knew that the Ricky Gervais speech was controversial. I never looked into all the con uh, into all the stuff outside of the speech as to what was controversial. I mean, I knew what he was saying was controversial. You could see my react video to the Ricky Gervais monologue. I fucking enjoyed the hell watching uh, watching Ricky Gervais just totally uh, knock down the Hollywood establishment a peg. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very hypocritical, um, well, just Hollywood in general, I, I can't even think right now. It doesn't matter what me can relate to anything in that sentence. It doesn't matter what millionaire actors think. It matters what politicians think. I don't care what Joaquin Phoenix thinks about global warming. I care what <laughs> Scott Morrison thinks about global warming. And what Scott Morrison, Australia's climate change denier in chief, thinks about global warming is this. Hey, China, you want to buy some more coal? We've got fucking shit tons of the shit. Special <laughs> offer. Every 10,000 tons of coal you buy, we'll throw in the charred remains of a koala bear. Can't say Ooh. fairer than that. Half a billion animals dead. Yeah, but that guy who wrote The Office made a joke about diversity. The Nazi. Yeah, no kidding. Fucking stupid <clears throat> Hollywood. Well, the BAFTA nominations <laughs> were announced yesterday, but the list has been criticised for its lack of diversity. There are no women nominated for Best Director, and the acting categories have been accused of being too white. Let's take a look at some of the nominations. It's a very good point uh, that Jonathan Pye makes right there. I mean, 
seriously, what what the media see, sees as important, which unfortunately has poisoned the brains of average citizens to see as important, is lack of diversity at award shows. Now, I love the jokes that Ricky Gervais made about that. Uh, especially about... Well, just watch my video and you'll see. Uh, but, like, it's just ridiculous that far more important things are going on and people want to complain about that. I mean, another thing is... Um, I mean, Australia is literally on fire, like, all over the place. That's just sad. It's actually a really large country. Large enough to also be a continent. I mean, the U.S. would be large enough to be that, but it's part of a, the North America continent. So, you know... But Australia is huge. It's it's basically the size of the U.S., just, you know, the geography is, like, upside down on the map, basically. So, that's just sad. It's it's awful that what's, what's happening in Australia and all that the media really wants to talk about is, you know, lack of diversity, this, and all this shit. Um... And then, of course, recently with the shameful bias in moderating by, C by CNN. Let's continue that hashtag. Hashtag CNN is trash. Keep that going. Um, but yeah, thank you again, Jonathan Pye. It's been too long since I've actually watched videos from your channel. Since I've actually reacted to them and it's been so long... Um, I would like to actually show you his channel. He's he's a really funny guy. Not like he needs my help or anything. He has 587,000 subscribers. But look at that. Look at that. He has all kinds of fucking hilarious videos. I guess in 2019, the UK had an election. Um, the Brexit... <laughs> look at his facial expressions and the thumbnails. Oh my gosh. It's, it's so good. But, um... Jonathan Pye back at the studio of the U.S. Oh my gosh, but yeah, I, I my gosh, I ought to visit his website and find out where he's if he's ever coming back to the U.S. or anytime soon. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I end up watching a bonus video, so I hope you appreciate that. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Look forward to more React videos. Plus, I still plan to do some more live streams in the future as well. I'll be primarily live streaming off my PC, as unfortunately I lost my Nintendo Switch last month. Actually, I've literally not played a single video game since then. Uh, as of the recording of this video, J January 17th, 2020. Um, but, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell icon for to be notified of more videos.